Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can send a GET request and a POST request from JavaScript to a backend created using Django with the help of something called XML HTTP request. So before we get into the video, you may be new to a term called XML HTTP request. So we will go through the definition of that. XML HTTP request. XML HTTP request objects are used to interact with servers. You can retrieve data from a URL without having to do a full page refresh. This enables a web page to update just part of a page without disrupting what the user is doing. So if you are a person who already know how to send a POST request using HTML forms, you may have already gone through the scenario in which you have to refresh the entire page just to send a POST request. So in that case, if you are having any animations running through the front end of the website while refreshing the page, that animation or the flow of the animation is going to be affected. So, uh, XML HTTP, so with the help of XML HTTP request, you now don't have to refresh the entire page, but you can send the request asynchronously without disrupting the user or the animations or affecting the flow of the website. So, uh, well, with that being said, Let's get started. Now, I have a Django project set up in here called project in which I have an application called app and I already have a template called home.html. So as you can see in my urls.py, there is an admin URL, which is the default thing while you set up a Django project. And I have a home page. That is something I created. So in this home URL, I am directing it to a function called home page from app.views. So yeah, that home page is returning the template called home.html. Inside home.html, I'm having two buttons uh, with IDs get and post respectively. And uh, you can see the home page in here where yeah, we have two buttons, get request and another button to send post request. Now, these buttons doesn't work now, we have to make it work. That's what we're gonna do in this video. First of all, we will uh, get the things done with get request. So for that, document dot get element by ID, and I'm gonna get the 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 button with the ID get, and I'm gonna add an on click callback to this button, in inside of which I'm gonna send the get request. So as I said, we are using XML HTTP request, so request object is equal to and I'm going to initialize this uh, XML HTTP request and to make it work we we have a method in XML HTTP, HTTP request called on ready state change which basically gets called whenever the state of the request changes so inside of which I'm going to say if this dot if uh, this dot ready state is equal to four and this this dot status is equal to 200 and that's when I'm gonna console dot log this dot response text so yeah you basically didn't understand any of this so I'm, I'm gonna explain this now well uh, uh, this function is going to get called whenever the state of the XML HTTP request basically this request object the instance of XML HTTP request in our case it is a request object whenever its states get changed this function this function is going to get called and when the ready state is for, which means we have already complete, successfully uh, send the get request and we have received the message or the received the response and the status is 200, which means successful without any errors. So uh, if that cases are uh, okay, and now uh, well, with that being said, we are now gonna console.log the response text. So what is this response text? Let's see. Uh, let's write the remaining part of the code request.open and now we are going to send a get request onto a URL called get. 
okay we have to create this url in our urls.py urls which we are going to do in a, in a minute request.object.send so that's it for the uh, front end uh, side in javascript now we have to do the back end in urls i'm gonna create something called get and in views.py i'll need another function saying get request where i am going to return an http response saying get request received success successfully okay yeah that's it and i'm going to import this function into urls.py which i'm going to do here and use it in here so we have this get url up and running in our backend so in our home.html we, we already we are sending a get request to a url called get and now to explain what it, what me what is meant by this dot response text so this response text is basically going to be this one straight and simple okay and I'm sorry uh, if you already know uh, how this statement or this keyword works in JavaScript it doesn't really work with arrow functions so I may have to convert change that arrow function into a real function yeah so now we will have this keyword working so well this keyword points towards the uh, instance of XML HTTP request which means basically this thing okay yeah, now I'll refresh the page and click the button. Yeah, in our console, we get, we have get request received successfully. Okay, so this is basically working. You know, uh, if you want to uh, change this and say like something like, hello, hello world, and re refresh this, hello world, it works. And uh, if you are confused with uh, how this keyword is working, it's very simple, guys. You have to do something like this. You can replace this keyword with the request object, and I believe that it's still going to work because it's basically the same thing. Yeah, it's still working. So that's it, okay? And and as, and as I said, you cannot use arrow functions. You, you should use the real functions. Uh, to be able to work with this keyword if you, we are using an arrow function which, will, which I will show you things are not really going to work you know this is not working because this keyword is invalid so yeah that's how JavaScript works so you may you have to go along with it let's see yeah now it's working so uh, that's how you're going to send a get request in JavaScript. Now, well, let's see how we can send a post request. I have copied and pasted this, the same code, and I'm going to change this get into post. And in here, this can be the same thing. And this should be post. And we now create a URL called post. And in our URLs.py, we will have this post and we will need a new function in our views.py saying post request or any any name it doesn't matter the name doesn't matter in this case in my case i'm going to do i'm going to name it post request and we're going to return post request yes in url.py i'm going to import the post request and i'm going to use it in the case of post url in home.html, yeah, we now have this ready. So obviously, uh, with the get request is already working, we may expect the post request to work too. But as you may already know, or if you may not know, in Django, if you want to send a post request to uh, a backend created using Django or a server created in Django, you really have to have something called a CSRF token. Without a CSRF token, this is going to be a forbidden or uh, this, is go this is going to be a backend error or something like that. Obviously, it's not going to work. So we will need a CSRF token. 
So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, initialize a variable called C CSRF token, okay, which is a large token, uh, which we can get using something like this. CSRF token. So the CSRF token is not this actually. This value is going to be replaced by Django while we are using, you know, while we are running it on the server or while we are running it on our local local host or any server. This is going to be uh, replaced. So this CSRF token, this is the CSRF token. Now uh, you can see it in here. While I refresh and if I click CSRF, sorry, CSRF token, you can see the CSRF token in here. Yes, this is going to be the token, okay? Django has already replaced the token. Let's get back. Now to send a post request, as I said, we need to have something like this, like, um, what was it? Yeah, uh, we have a post request into a post URL, yeah, content. set request header like x csrf token okay and that csrf token is going to be csrf token which is the variable initialized in here okay let's let me give some spacing for that variable yeah we have the spacing yeah csrf token so i think that should do it let let me see let us see Send post request. Okay, this is forbidden. For some reason, it is forbidden, and I don't know why. Oh, this should be something like this, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, post request. It is now working. Yeah, it's now working. So, in views.py, so now you can see we are sending a get request, we are sending a post request, and we don't really see any difference among them. Well, in POST request, you can send something called form data, which is a key value pair. You can send the form data along with POST request, okay? So uh, just imagine that you are handling with uh, a form of uh, a login form or a sign up form where the user is giving you their credentials such as name and their age, okay? In that case, you can send that name and age along with the POST request, but not along with the GET, get request. That's that's really the difference between get request and post request. So uh, we will create something called as form data with initializing it with an object called form, sorry, form data. Okay. So, and in this form data, I'm going to append a key value pair into the form data saying name, and that name is going to be something like John and age is going to be what 17 years old okay and this form data is going to be sent along with the post request so let's see now i refresh send post request post request is sent and we haven't really received it in here so to receive the uh, form data in the back end you have got to do something like this request request dot post and refresh the page, send post request. Now you can see in our uh, in our console, not in the not in the Chrome, not in the browser, inside the local host, you can see a query dictionary, query dict, which is printed in here, where you can see a key value pair just like a dictionary. Name is John, age is 17. That's really the difference between sending a GET request and POST request. In POST request, you can send a form data along with it. That's really the difference. And you can see we have successfully sent GET request and POST request. So, yeah, that's that's how you send, you know, that's how you handle with the XML HTTP request. So, uh, I hope this video was very clear for you. And, uh, yeah, you may have the links to GitHub for the following code in the description box down below, I guess. And yeah, if you find this video helpful, I think you should probably like the video. And if you don't like the video, 
you can probably dislike the video and tell me why you didn't like the video. And if you want more of my contents, you can subscribe to the channel and enable the bell button.